Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Hot Toys Captain America, the Winter Soldier Falcon 1-6 scale collectible figure. This is part of code MMS245 and features Falcon from his appearance in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. A superior sequel, uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, was probably one of my favorite uh, Marvel movies. It's not my favorite, but it definitely did surprise me. I kind of went in there thinking it wasn't going to be as good, and I was thoroughly surprised by it. Of course, the back of the box also features the cast and crew responsible for producing this one six scale treatment of Falcon. Uh, head sculptor, in this case, was So Young Lee, and head painter was J.C. Hong. With that being said, Spot's going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Falcon, 1-6 scale collectible figure. There's more Henny Way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Of course, before we have a look at the Falcon 1-6 scale figure, let's have a look at the display stand that comes with the piece. He is treated to a diamond-shaped display stand, which we've commonly seen now with a lot of the 6 scale releases. The top, however, does feature this shield uh, logo, which could technically really be perceived as the top of the helicarrier. Uh, then the front, we have the Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and Falcon on the front metallic placard and of course because he is a flight figure you could not have done him any sort of justice without the inclusion of an adjustable neck which is also attached to the display stand. It is also to note that the display stand has that cardboard insert that I'm not super crazy about but you know at the end of the day whatever cost saving measures they can do as opposed to this being printed if they can go with a root of a cardboard I can overlook that because really, savings here, if that means more figure releases, this is such a small, small gripe that I can certainly live with a cardboard applique uh, piece on top of the generic display stands. Falcon here is a fantastic figure. It's extremely hard not to see any faults with him where he would look different than how he did look in his real, in his real life uh, form. I think they really did a fantastic job on this piece. And if you ever doubt the level of quality that uh, Hot Toys puts into fabric and costumes, let Falcon here really be a great example of how intricate, really, when you start looking at straps and everything else that's been added to the suit, there's a lot going on in this piece. Without any doubt whatsoever as well, the likeness to Anthony Mackie is really there. Each head is hand-painted, and it's the hand-painted that really makes the details shine. The eyes, once again, are that wet color. It's as opposed to just being a solid matte uh, finish. They've put a gloss over the eyes too, just giving it more of a wet, realistic approach. The jaw and the textures, even especially around the the cheek area really accents a realistic approach. I almost feel like he's one of the more realistic uh, facially sculpted pieces of some of recent memories. Sometimes when it comes to um, Caucasian uh, Hot Toys figures, sometimes the skin color isn't quite right. But Anthony Mackey here, the skin color that they picked is definitely very realistic and it looks exactly like how he did in the movie. Falcon sports a short gray t-shirt underneath a uh, vest, military style vest. And then over top of the vest itself, he's got this harnessed piece, which later will be the section where we will add the backpack to. Um, there's probably maybe, I'm looking if the look at the t-shirt and then the vest, and then of course the harness over top. There's about three, four layers to the, the suit that he's wearing. And from top to bottom, he's finished out with the camo, this gray camo print, complete with the American flag on the front there. It's also interesting to note too, like all these extra harness straps too, that though they aren't removable, they're not something you can detach from themselves, it all gives you that real realistic approach to his costume. Showing a closer look of that harness, very impressive. I mean, right down to where you might not even be able to make it out, there's smaller little 
uh, indicators here, little details, and it says BUTR8, BUT8R, uh, 8-2 I should say, 12cc and 180N. Little tiny numbers, so small I almost couldn't even make them out, but included there just to give it that realistic look. One of the first accessories we'll have a look at that come included with Falcon is the ruby colored aviator goggles that come included with the piece. They are a softer rubber, so they can manipulate a little bit. The front doesn't feel like it's too problematic, and because this is plastic, as opposed to the strapping that I've seen with pieces, like for example, the Sideshow Collectibles Catwoman, uh, because that was an elastic strap, that came detached from the goggles. So smarter route that they went with all one mold versus it being an elastic piece on the back. The goggles sit very easily over his forehead. I was a little worried because these are, you know, because these are hand painted heads. I was worried that maybe by moving the goggles up and down that it could wear, could potentially wear, especially around the brow area, could remove a little bit of the paint on the face. It seems like there's just enough clearing though in the goggles that I don't feel it's so much of an issue moving the goggles up and down, but still it's not something I would probably do a lot of. If you were supposed to go with the route of a non-winged uh, Falcon, I probably would likely have the goggles up. The goggles down, I would probably reserve those for when I'm just dis displaying him, obviously, with his extremely large wings. It seems no better a segue than to start talking about his jetpack. The jetpack is battery operated. In fact, I've already taken the liberty of taking the pull tab off the back and luckily batteries are already included. So you don't have to worry about buying the batteries outright. The to activate the batteries or the light up options on the backpack, what you have to do is get around to the top here and just get your finger underneath. It's actually, I'm making it a lot harder than what it is. Just pop that off. And the top of the backpack actually adheres by magnet. Smart and just so much less hassle to worry about rather than it being a clip. I thought I actually had to really get in there and pop the, the snap off and possibly even snap it. But because it's magnetized, I don't have to worry about that as much. There is an on and off switch. Currently it is set to off. To switch it to on, you can see how it lights up the underside of his jetpack. Two middle yellow LED lights on the, well, two middle white LED lights, but because it's going through a yellow lens, it's coming out as yellow. And then two, one on either side of this middle section. It does project a fairly bright light, but that lens, that little honeycomb gold lens that they put in there as well, really kind of gives it that golden, it, it does really look like propulsion more so from a distance than certainly up close, but it's a really successful attempt. To attach the backpack to Falcon, you'll see on the, on the side profile of the backpack, there are clips, but they don't just straight clips. They kind of hook out, if I can kind of describe it with my thumb, they kind of hook out and they, sh they jot down. So when you put it onto his back, there's, a, there's two notches on the bottom, there's a notch on the top. You can't actually just attach it. And this is one place where I wish there had been a magnet. I don't feel it could have had to been a strong magnet, just a magnet enough that I could have attached it, I could have taken it off. Putting the backpack on can be a little problematic. Taking the backpack off is a little more difficult. So what you wanna do is line the backpack up, but line it higher up than where you're gonna be putting it. And you wanna put it in on an angle. And then from there, you pop it in and you push it down. And every time I do this, I get a little worried that it's gonna break. But as you can see, snaps into place, it's definitely not going anywhere. Now, just before we actually put the wings on, I just wanted to talk a little bit about these wings because they're extremely impressive. They're framed in almost like a gunmetal gray, a couple of little rivet points there as well. And there's this translucent smoky white that they put for the main uh, screen of what will be his wings. This will be the back section. What you will be looking at when you look at it from the figure is you're gonna be looking at it with the handles forward. And these little handles pop out, being very, very careful when removing them. They pop out and they, you put the hand of the figure here and then the handle of the wings 
goes over top of it. It's pretty much exactly the same as the Stealth Strike Iron Man, or Stealth Strike Captain America, where you took the clip off and you put the arm through and then you just put it over top. The wings themselves are, are also hinged. They're hinged in two points. There's a hinge in, I would say the knuckles, but I don't really would you consider these knuckles for the wings, but it's hinged in the first point and then hinged at the second point. It gives you a 65 degree angle down so that when you're not displaying Falcon, because really Falcon, once you start factoring the wings, Falcon will take up a good fair bit of space, at least by having the wings at, again, it's about 65 degrees, uh, you will at least keep them a little more out of the way that I probably will be, if I'm displaying Falcon, I'm probably likely going to be displaying him right next to Captain America. I really don't want Falcon taking up a lot of space. I'm not going to necessarily have him in flight mode because I really don't have the space to accommodate that. At least with the wings being adjustable, I don't have to worry about that. I mean, I can either have them straight out or again, I can adjust them down and I can have them hanging or attached so much like what you see here the wings simply just flip the figure around and there's these little tab pieces here these little side pieces that are they look like they're sticking further out than the jack the jet pack here see right here you have to get your finger in there and you have to just pull these tabs out and take the other side and you want to pull that out as well then take the wings and you want to make sure, Spot made sure he did this right, make sure that the handle side is facing this way. So this is the wing that you're going to want to attach to the jetpack. And there's a little grooved slot right in there. And there is a slight piece that sticks out on the wings. Take that, line it up, just like that and snap it into place. You may not hear uh, an immediate and obvious snap, but you'll know it's in place. And again, I, when I put the wings in, I usually have the wings down as opposed to sticking out, so I don't accidentally catch it with my arm. And again, that just snaps into place. And there you have Falcon with wings intact. As it goes for show pieces, Falcon looks great with the wings intact. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The wings will take up a lot of space. Falcon is not maybe something that if you have a smaller glass cabinet, Falcon may not be one that will be in the front of the glass cabinet because obviously he'll be blocking the six scale figures behind him. You may have him more kind of to the side or you could just really do, you could just take the wings completely off but I feel like for him to be Falcon, I really want to keep the wings completely attached. Now these are the wings completely, well, these are the wings folded down. Uh, then when you extend the wings further out, you extend it by the one point and you extend it again and do it on both sides. And there is Falcon completely with wings extended. He will, I would say, likely use his display stand. I'm faring a lot better than I thought I was going to but he probably will need a display stand. Just something to kind of hold him from the back because as obviously expected, he is more top heavy, a little more back heavy when he's got these wings in, attached. They're not, they're not super heavy, but they're heavy enough that can throw off his standing. Again, I'm faring better than I really thought I was going to, but it's impressive to have the wings on, but it's something you really have to factor in a lot of space to accommodate. Certainly no pun intended, but when you start factoring in the adjustable arm that comes on, attached to the display stand is really when you start can really start getting them into some dynamic poses. Again, you really have to factor in space when displaying this guy because his wingspan, his wingspan is give or take about the same length of his body, just maybe a little shy short of that on either side of him. So display him, but display him factoring that he is gonna be taking up a lot of space but really, this is how Falcon is meant to be displayed. Other accessories will include a pair of interchangeable hands, more ideally suited to be holding his submachine guns, a pair of partially closed hands, probably better suited for holding his wings, a pair of partially relaxed palms, two machine guns, a pair of wrist gauntlets. Now, to be fair, Spot did actually, these aren't the ones, these are the ones that come with the figure when you get them out of packaging. I've already actually swapped out 
the ones, the interchangeable ones with this, these ones right here, the ones that I've attached, I bring the figure forward here, the ones I have attached and the ones that are actually the interchangeable ones are ones that have pegs, pegs attached to those gauntlets. And that's because you can take the semi-automatic machine guns and you can attach them, let's find the right one here, you can attach them via that hole that's on his handle. Take the machine guns and you can attach them to his wrists so he is holding the machine guns when he's not of course firing them. This is suited for when he's actually got his hands holding onto the wings, you can still attach the machine guns that way. Now just because you attach the machine guns, you can, you can actually take the clip and slide it right off while still keeping that tab attached to the machine gun. It's one way to keep the machine guns at bay when he's in flight mode, and then instantly he can take them off and hold them in his hand. When it comes to Falcon's articulation, he has the standard 30 points of articulation, which include two ball joint sockets in the head. Now he has one ball joint socket right in the cavity of his head, and then he has a secondary ball joint at the stem of his neck. This is ideally suited for when he's in flight mode because you get a lot more movement rather than just relying on the one. He also includes a upper crunch via ball joint in his torso as well as a swivel in his waist, ball hinged socket shoulders, swivel in the wrist and hinged elbows. He also has a swivel in the wrists. Rounding out, he has a hinge in the leg which allows movement out, forward and back, not at all limited or restricted by the pants that he's wearing because the pants are loose enough. Got a lot of clearance going on there. He has a double hinge in the knee as well as a hinge and rotation in his foot. At the end of the day, Falcon turned out to be a fantastic figure. Hot Toys really did a, a just an incredible, incredible job, not only on the fabric, because really there's a lot of intricacies going on in the suit that he wears, but also very, very good job on the design the implementation of his wings. This is how likely I'm gonna have the, the Falcon display. I'm probably gonna have him displayed along with the Stealth Strike Captain America. The only one I'm really missing from this trio is the, of course, the Black Widow. The Black Widow has been released also in the Avengers treatment, so I'm not really sure if I'm ever gonna get a Winter Soldier uh, Black Widow. But at the end of the day, I'm very happy to have Falcon displayed along with Cap. Spot ended up picking up one six scale Falcon here from the folks over at Alter Ego Comics. Uh, they have a whole slew of six scale figures. So if you didn't get your chance to pick up this guy before, definitely head over there now and add this guy to your collection. Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Captain America, the Winter Soldier Falcon one six scale collectible figure. Stay tuned guys, Spot's gonna have more hot toys and other six scale figure reviews heading your way Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.